I think that confidence, there's no specific definition of confidence. It depends on your opinion, on how you view things, and how you understand things. You can, so each one of us, we can define confidence in our own ways. But today I'm going to define confidence depends, uh, I, I got this definition from the uh, dictionary.com, the first one and the second one, and the third one is mine. And I'd say it's full trust, belief in power, trustworthiness, or the ability of a person or thing. And also another definition is believing oneself and one's power or abilities, self-confidence, self-reliance, assurance, and what I came up with, um, I, just, I just found five different words, which is called faith, reliance, dependence, assurance, and trust in oneself. And once you, have, once you have all these words or all these things, then you'll be confident, obviously. But we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're, gonna look, uh, we're gonna look a little bit deeper later on about faith, reliance, and things like that. But right now, let's move on. How to develop confidence. The first one, what Bill suggests, is about get the factor about fear of speaking in public. We're gonna go a little bit deeper after a few seconds. And the second one is prepare in the proper way. And the third point is uh, predetermine your mind to success. And the last one is act confident. So we're gonna go to from the first one, get the factor about fear of speaking in public. Uh, fact number one, you're not unique in your fear of speaking in public. That means you're not alone. If your fear of speaking in public is not something that uh, you're the only one who feel like that, but everybody feel like that. And according to the research, it says that 80 to 90 percent of the students from stage fright, uh, students suffer from stage fright at the beginning of the course. And I'm not sure about this research if it's right or wrong, but we can we can try to prove it right now. How how many of you guys were a little bit scared and fear to speak during the first class? Yeah, first class. Let's be honest. So nobody was scared. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Because that means this research is not right. That's wrong. <laughs> Alright, let's move to the second fact. A certain amount of sage fried is useful. And what the book suggests is about if you have a certain amount of fear inside you, just a little bit, uh, it will generate you to think fast, to talk more fluently, and generally speaking with greater intensity than under normal circumstances. It's basically say it's a sign of readiness. It's something that motivates you from within to do action then you have fear inside you that will generate you to do action. It's not just something from outside, but something from within. And what do you think about that? Well, I think you take a different, um, um, you have a different body language if you're afraid a little bit, and you're more like, um, how, how do you say, like if you're relaxed, you kind of look like really chill, and your body is like really relaxed. And if you're like afraid and you look more serious and also more concentrated, which is for you then to focus and talk. That's right. For me, as well, I think this, I mean, I think the fact number two is not right for me. I mean, I think it's wrong. Because I don't need to be, to have a certain amount of fear so that I can talk fluently or I can have courage to speak or to speak fast or not to make mistakes. I believe that if I don't have fear at all, then I can do things better than I can have fear. So, for me also, it's wrong. And fact number three, no one has never completely lose all stage fright. What do you think about that? That means even the great speakers that we know, be Barack Obama, or other people that we know, the great people in speech, they never lose. What do you think? Do you agree with that? Yes or no? Uh, in general terms, yes. I mean, like in this, in this casual setting, maybe the professor has no stage fright anymore because it was a prolonged time and he gets to know us real quick. But in a bigger setting, when he has maybe to present something to the, to the faculty or something, and your idea about this course or something, he's probably so nervous, even though he does it for years too, because you always have something to lose, you always have people looking critically at you. That's right. So I think you can get used to it in some circumstances, but never lose it completely in bigger events. Okay. In my own opinion, I don't really know about this, because I haven't met everybody and asked them how do they feel when they go to like just to provide a speech, public speaking. So I, I'm not sure about that, if it's true or it's not true. But from my own experience, I think it's true. Because I've always been so nervous. Whatever I have presentation, I'm doing something. I cannot even have lunch. I mean, my mind is just concentrated on presenting. I can eat after that, but before that, I just focus and worry too much about it. My past experience, not present. And the last fact is, <laughs> the chief cause of your fear is simply you are accustomed to speak in public and to make this fear situation disappear, you just need to practice. Practice, practice, and you will know the more you practice, the more you become better, or the more you become perfect. I think this works in all of us, I mean, even for myself. Oh.